In this park, Plato started his school of philosophy. More about it in a minute. When it comes to career, we all have this idealistic picture in our mind of someone who is straight to the point, focused, rational. And the reality is, as we found out by living, that we are not always focused and straight to the point and rational. And that really creates a struggle or an inner conflict. We're going to look at where this struggle comes from and also give you more self-acceptance by making you realize that it's okay. It's part of life and it actually makes you stronger. So let's start at the beginning. Know thyself. And to know yourself, we have to understand in which society you have been growing up. And to understand this society, we have to go back 2000 or even more than 2000 years ago where the seeds of Western thinking have been planted. The ancient Greek had many gods, but two of them were really important to them. Apollo, the god of the sun, associated with war, rationality, logics, purity, culture, and we had Dionysus, the god of wine and dance, of irrationality and intoxication, orgies, chaos, the senses, emotions. And here's the important part. They were both appreciated by the ancient Greek. Dionysus, uh, one of his statues, faces, was actually also uh, found at this uh, burial site. These people saw that whether you are irrational or rational or chaotic or structured, these are inherent to our human experience. Now you might know this famous philosopher called Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, the guy with the funky mustache. No, the other one, yeah. So in his first book called The Birth of Tragedy, he discovered something really interesting about our Western way of thinking and the way our society works. So what he did was he compared ancient Greek society to our current Western society. And what he found was that the aspects that are associated with Apollo, so rationality and purity and order, are all very appreciated in our current society, but all the things that are associated with Dionysus, which is like irrationality and chaos and intoxication, are all things that we are kind of suppressing. Now this all began about 2000 years ago when we started to really work with our minds and philosophize and we started to believe that we could solve every problem in the world by rationally thinking about it. But this is where we went wrong because you can not grasp everything with your cognition. And Nietzsche warned us that by suppressing this Dionysian part of ourselves and of society, we would be creating a dangerous shadow. Because like I said, it's just inherent to the human experience. It's part of us. And you don't have to be a therapist to know that suppressing parts of who you actually are is just bad. Now, the reason that Nietzsche called this book the birth of tragedy was because he and ancient Greek people found that art is created where Apollo and Dionysus come together. So Nietzsche take this example of theater plays where the hero of the play is always trying to fight against chaos and which is Dionysus and trying to gain order which is Apollo and if this doesn't work out it's a tragedy. So by now I've laid down the groundwork which is Apollo and Dionysus should both be appreciated and we should not only strive to be super rational and the second thing is that our society really appreciates Apollonian aspects. So being rational, being structured, being focused. And it really dislikes Dionysus. So it will tell you to stay sober, to think clearly, don't be irrational, don't get emotional. Or as Pink Floyd would say it, welcome to the machine. And of course, Apollonian characteristics brought us literally to the moon. You see what I did there? But it also created a conflict. And I must ask you a question now. Are you seeing the world through 
Apollonian and Dionysian goggles already because now I'm going to give you some examples to show you how the interplay between these two forces of these two gods are everywhere around us and they strengthen whatever is in between them because it creates conflict but that's also how it anything gets stronger so first of all the video that i released exactly one year ago was about the creative process which is dionysian and apollonian at its best because the Greek also believed that where they come together, art is created. Now, what do you do in a creative process? You start thinking very divergently. Everything is chaotic, everything is possible, everything is unlimited, and that is Dionysus. Until you get to a point where you have to create stuff, and that's where you narrow down. That is Apollo. That is where you have to be rational, clear, and focused. Another example, the 1960s or 70s work ethic we put people in cubicles they are very structured very ordered they are distant from each other these are all apollonian aspects and now slowly the world is waking up and we are hiring hr people to put emotion and feeling and senses back into work life because we realize that this way of working isn't sustainable and people are not machines but they are humans back in the 60s where the hippies were kind of trying to make a revolution against society the way it was it's also a super clear example of how dionysus intoxication hippies dancing senses are fighting against structure and just the way things are already and this brings us to psychedelics which is obviously very dionysian and irrational focused on the senses on dancing on emotions uh, which also relates to silicon valley where everyone starts microdosing which is again a very interesting conflict because silicon valley is very structured and like straightforward but somehow when they realize that if they start microdosing they get more productive more creative so it's again this interplay between apollo and dionysus and again a big tragedy the breakout of the coronavirus was totally chaotic it was fully dionysus and then there we had science or rationality and apollo trying to gain order in this chaos of course we also have stoicism which is very rational which is also very apollonian and on the other hand we have buddhism which is focused way more on the senses not that much logical but more intuitive which is also very dionysian you can also find it in relationships where if you start it might all be orgies and emotions and intoxication and eventually it might turn bad and you get the apollonian part of it where it's all about being distant and if you're really unlucky it might start a war another example that stood out to me somehow it just kept hanging around in my mind was these stories that you might hear from people who say that they've been abducted by aliens uh, i'm not saying that that exists but the common denominator among many of these is that the aliens were trying to figure out how human emotions work and it really resonated or stood out to me because i can see how if we just follow this rational trajectory we might end up not having any idea about how emotions work because we are overly rational. Now the last two points are also important to understand because Apollo is associated with culture and like Mihai Csikszentmihalyi in his book Flow explains, culture is basically just a really big game with certain rules. So if you are too much like Dionysus and not really caring about culture, you're going to have a difficult time with fitting in with all these rules associated with culture. Now, Charles Darwin, of course, also added structure to the chaos by inventing the theory of evolution. And this brings me to the next point, because you might have heard about survival of the fittest, which means the one organism that fits in with the environment survives. 
And this is important because I just explained that society values Apollonian characteristics like rationality and order. I'm not saying that you should be more like Apollo. I'm just saying that the way that society currently operates, it values and appreciates Apollonian characteristics. And that means that people who value intoxication and irrationality are less likely to be successful in the way that our current society operates. But it's important to remember that you need both of these sides. You cannot be too rational because if you're too rational you're going to be not very creative because you also need this chaotic part of yourself. So coming back to this inner struggle and where it comes from because society expects you to be really Apollonian because that's what it values. But if we just look honestly at the human experience we see that there's also a Dionysian side to ourselves. It's really about finding a healthy balance between the two because like I said, it's the interplay between these two forces that strengthens anything that's in between. So if you have to remember one thing from this video, it's about loving Apollo and Dionysus and not rejecting these parts of yourself because that's only going to make you feel guilty and that's only going to make it a downward spiral. I hope that this video gave you a new perspective, new lenses to look at the world. From now on you will recognize Apollo and Dionysus forces everywhere around you. Both of these forces are at play inside of you and that you don't have to feel bad about it. It's part of the human condition to have this Dionysian more impulsive side as well as a rational and Apollonian side. And how they come together will only make you stronger. But I do have to say that our society currently really values Apollonian characteristics. And if you want to know more about this, I created a library with a lot of links in the description. It's on a platform called Novel, made by a friend of mine. And it will give you a big overview of all the resources about this topic that I found throughout the last months. And now you probably understand that this channel is created to give order to your chaos by helping you to focus. So if you want to learn more about the focus zone, I made a video about that, which really helped me. Uh, check it out and thanks for watching. I will see you in another video.